Welcome to the 2020 AmbiV State of the Shop. Now, this is a new video series I wanna start doing, mostly for my own benefit, but for anyone who's interested in my projects, is I'll document the current status of all my vehicles and the shop itself, and basically have a time capsule of all the project cars. Now, I also want to try to make this more interesting, so I'm going to be pairing a whiskey with each year that I do one of these videos, generally summing up how the year went. And because we're starting with 2020, that makes it particularly easy. This year, my pairing for 2020 is an Octomore. Now, for those of you not familiar with 2020 or Octomore, both are extremely unpleasant for anyone who don't like them. Octomore is a heavily peated whiskey, which my girlfriend classifies as sadness in a glass. I actually quite like it. In my particular state, it's quite rare. It has a very unique flavor compared to most of my other whiskeys. And ultimately, those two things play well together because people don't drink my rare whiskey. So I've had it on the shelf for quite a while. One of these days, I will hunt down a newer batch. The 091 is actually a lot older. I think there's an 11 out or something. But this one has survived long enough and it survived 2020, so it must be doing well. Now for my rundown of my project statuses, I wanted to order the list by something logical. So I decided to go based on my arbitrary assumption of how fast the vehicle is. So to start with, let's talk about the 1955 Buick Special. Now the 55 Buick Special has been sitting in my shop for a few years now and really just needs the front suspension put together and the fuel system put together so that the engine can run. The car was a barn find. We had the chassis lifted off. We went ahead and powder coated the whole frame, rebuilt the brakes, rebuilt the suspension, had the engine rebuilt, cleaned up the trans and put it all back together. And then the people that were working on it went out of business. So the car hasn't moved in probably four years now. And really, I just need to get around to spending a couple weeks trying to find all the hardware to assemble the front suspension. And I've never seen how it goes together, so it's a complete mystery. Once the car has been put together and is rolling, all I need to do is fabricate a few custom brackets, do some wiring, and get the EFI installed, and the car should be ready to go. I'm making custom brackets so that the two-barrel sniper EFI can fit down underneath the factory oil bath air filter so that the engine looks mostly stock, which should be pretty cool. My dad really liked this car and that's why the project got started and then I inherited it, so now it's mine to finish. Hopefully he'll drive it at least a few times after it's put back together, just so that we can justify having had it in the shop for this long. Now, the only cars that can compete with a completely immobile car for slowest on the list would be either the 1976 Triumph TR6 or the 1992 Mazda Miata. And I think the Triumph edges out the Miata. It is English, so it spends most of its time not running, and it barely qualifies as having a functional electrical system. So that is probably the next slowest car on the list. Last year, we changed out the exhaust system to try to fix some problems with it, replaced all the floors to fix a bunch of rust holes, generally went through the whole thing, had the transmission rebuilt, and got it to a point where it was mostly running and driving, but now we're tired of the fuel system being problematic in the electricals. So I'm going to be doing all the wiring again here shortly, putting in an EFI system to make it actually start and stop reliably, and changing it over to an electric fan to get some of the drag off the engine, because if it's only got two hamsters powering the whole engine, we need one of them not to be spinning a fan. Now, after the TR6, the Mazda Miata is definitely the next up. That is an incredibly slow car and it's still got essentially a factory engine in it. Although we did spend an inordinate amount of time retrofitting everything else in the car. The car has a new freshly rebuilt engine. It has complete coil over suspension. We replaced all the bushings. We replaced the differential with a limited slip, changed out the wheels and tires, and the car is generally new other than the exterior. It still has all the same old dents and dings and scratches that it did before in faded paint but we did put 240Z seats in it, so it has a little bit of a retro vibe, and she did some other aesthetics inside. The car really was only intended to be her practice autocross car, so we didn't want to commit too much money to it, but we've definitely put way more time into it than I would have chosen to. But going into 2021, there's not a lot left on the car, so hopefully it'll just be minor things from now on. Now, after the 92 Miata, I think the next slowest car would probably be the 1978 Datsun 280Z. 
This was a 78280Z that had factory fuel injection that I converted to a fast EFI fuel injection system and then decided it wasn't adequate and that I was going to paint it for some reason and now it's sitting in storage with no paint and waiting to be finished. The body shop that was working with me on it ran out of time because of COVID and the car had came back to me unfinished. I need somebody to patch the moonroof so that I don't end up with any Bondo up there so that I can go ahead and finish getting it painted and put the new interior in. Ultimately, the car will end up a metallic root beer or some similar color with a black interior and then I'll use it as a daily driver. Aside from the EFI kit, it already has a rebuilt transmission and overall fires up no matter how long I leave it sit. So it's a very reliable car. I'm excited to actually get to drive it again. Once I get past the 78280Z, the list starts to speed up a bit. The next would probably be the 1940 Chevy Special Deluxe. This car is a Chevy 350 swapped car with a Mustang II front suspension. It's kind of a hot rod. Generally, I would say it probably could run 13s in the quarter mile, but because of how sketchy it is and how all the bushings are worn out on it, I would say you're probably safer in the 14s. Now, this car is actually one my girlfriend really liked, so I bought it so that she could decide what she wanted to do with it. So I haven't done a whole lot. I fixed some wiring. I generally got it more reliable and fixed a few cracks and some issues it had underneath that needed to be re-welded and fixed a suspension perch that had completely fallen off. But otherwise, the car is just basically hanging out, going to parades, and living a pretty cushy life until she decides what she wants it done up to be. Now, I'm thinking it should probably go more reliable weekend car or more reliable car for parade use. She kind of was looking at some performance stuff. So until that's ironed out, I don't know what it's going to be. So you probably won't see much of it in 2021 other than going to events. Now, the 1967 Mustang's probably next up on the list. It's probably right around there in quarter mile time. It's got a 302 in it making 330 to 350 horsepower and that car is my daily driver. Now, the 302 that's in it was never intended to be in this Mustang, but I needed to put it in something to break it in. It's actually for a different project, and you'll see it on the channel coming up, if 2020 doesn't carry over into 2021, and we actually get some businesses open again, I can actually get back to work. Now, the 67 Mustang's body and paint has been left alone. It's got about a 20-foot paint job on it, Pretty bad orange peel. Got a lot of dents and dings here and there and scuffs and wear and tear, but I like the character. But I've replaced almost everything else. The full suspension's been redone. All the bushings are redone. It now has drop spindles in the front with Willwood big brakes, and the electrical system has been completely gone through and has a PMU-16 in it. Now, I've also put a vintage air air conditioning system on it, but I don't really care because it has roll-down windows, so I just roll the windows down. Overall, the car's about where it needs to be, but there's some weird things I'd like to just perfect on it. And who knows, maybe I'll put keyless ignition or something in there too, just because it is the daily driver. But you'll probably see that more in 2021, as it's one of the cars that I'm always tinkering with. Now, after the Ford Mustang, we start to get into faster vehicle territory. And the next up is actually my girlfriend's 2019 Kawasaki W800 Cafe. This motorcycle is her first motorcycle that she's learning to ride on. Now, the bike is an actual really good starter bike, even though it is an 800cc bike. It is a parallel twin old style engine that basically makes about 50 horsepower. So imagine a Harley or something, larger displacement, low power. The bike is really well mannered. It has anti-lock brakes and fuel injection, so you don't have to worry about fighting with it to get it started or stopped. And it looks old and everywhere we go, it gets compliments. So it's a really good starter bike and probably a bike she'll keep for quite a while. Now that's probably in the mid 13 second range with the right rider, I would guess. So it's a good solid spot on the list to break the list in half. Now we'll start getting into the faster vehicles and the next would probably be the 2004 Dodge Viper. The Dodge Viper was my most recent acquisition and it's something that I've toyed with having but always thought was kind of ludicrous and 2020 just pushed me over the edge into buying one. Maybe people weren't overstating how badly these things hydroplane.
Now, it is actually one of the more practical supercars. It's easily maintained. My girlfriend even used it to film some videos showing how to do oil changes and things because it's so easy to work on and see what you're doing. And overall, I don't think the car is going to be much of a problem. My problem is going to be deciding whether or not it needs more horsepower. I'm right now basically flipping a coin between giving it 300 more horsepower or leaving it alone because they're appreciating in value and should be kind of kept and preserved. So we'll see what 2021 brings for this car. But I did finally break the first thing that actually cost money, and you'll be seeing that in an upcoming video. Now, after the Dodge Viper, which is probably a high 11s, low 12 second car, would be another motorcycle. And that would be the 2003 Yamaha FZ1. Now, the FZ1 is an interesting motorcycle. I bought it used for my girlfriend so that she had something to practice riding that was a bigger four-cylinder bike and would be more comfortable on longer rides. And this fills the role perfectly. It is essentially a detuned Yamaha R1 sport bike engine put into a sport touring frame that gives you a much more upright and comfortable riding position, but as much power as you could possibly need. It's probably somewhere around 140 horsepower and only has 17,000 miles on it, so it's got another 70, 80,000 miles of carefree maintenance probably out of this bike. Now, the bike is a bit of a handful, but it's also a really good starting point as the mannerisms for it lend itself to basically only getting you in as much trouble as you choose to get yourself into. So we'll probably be using it on all the longer trips, and it's already become her sort of go-to bike for anything longer than around town riding. That bike is probably a low 11 seconds, so it fairly safely gets its spot on the list. The only vehicle left that's faster than the FZ1 is the one that's behind me, my 1973 Datsun 240Z. Now the 240Z, for anyone who's been following the channel, you know it has a very long history with me. I'm pretty sure it's cursed or possessed, and I've finally gotten it to the point where I actually get to use it again. This car has far more money into it than I'd like to admit. It has a built SR20 DET engine in it, making 350 horsepower at the wheels right now with the smallest turbo setup that I have, and is probably good for four or 500 horsepower, no problem. It has forged internals, it has Tomei cams, it has titanium sprains and retainers. In general, this car is way overbuilt for what it is and only weighs about 2,250 pounds. So it is probably a solid high 10 second car. Now, the whole car is sitting on techno toy tuning coilovers. It has an R200 rear diff. It's got beefed up axles and currently sits with Willwood big brakes all the way around. I've put the interior back in the car and put a PMU-16 in to control all the power management for the systems of the car, but I need to pull everything back out to finalize the installation of the heating and ventilation system, get that mounted in the dash with the vintage air controls, and I need to pull the engine, clean the interior of the engine bay again, now that there's metal filings in there from finishing the suspension installations, and ultimately at some point fit the CD00A transmission behind the engine. That's a six speed out of a 370Z that will give me the reliability I need to put the power down without worrying about accidentally making too much traction and shattering gear set all over the highway. Now that car will definitely be getting a lot of work this year. I just don't know when. So at some point expect to see a major overhaul on it and I'll be getting more miles on it so that I can finish braking in the engine, finalize the tuning and hopefully see some race events with it. So if that's your cup of tea, you'll definitely be happy for 2021. If there's any other cars that sound interesting to you that you'd like to know more about, please ask down in the comments down below. And as always, I'll see you in the next video.